Welcome to this demonstration of the refresher course for the Civil Engineering Professional Engineering Exam on CD-ROM. This course is similar to what you might take at a local institution by going for 10 weeks in a row every Saturday morning for 4 hours. The big difference is you get to pick the time and you get to pick the place where you want to have the course. It's available at your own home or at your office on your own computer. Now it's better than that because we have highly re researched this course and the topics to match what we have seen on previous civil engineering exams as far as types of subject matter, types of questions, and we bring this research to you it's not our objective to teach you again your civil engineering bachelor's degree. Our sole purpose is to find the types of questions and the type of material that will get you to pass this exam. Here's a list of topics that we'll be going over in each session. Now each of these topics and each session will consist of a lecture by the professor it's a multimedia lecture, much like you see right here, with visual graphics. We center these lectures around a series of problems that we know are similar to what will be found on the exam. And we'll solve these problems on the lecture. Afterwards, we'll give you a series of problems to solve on your own and the solutions will be available when you're complete. Now, we will be coordinating our discussion with the Civil Engineering Reference Handbook, and not only will I be telling you which chapters that are involved with that particular topic, but I'll also able, be able to whittle this book down by about 90%. There's really only about 10% of it that you often see on the Civil Engineering PE exam. And I'm going to show you the places that you should be looking at and the many places that you really just need to have it available for on the day of the test. Now, for example, in the construction section we'll be talking about economics. And I'll show you easy ways to solve economics problems using the interest tables that are available in your reference handbook. Also in the construction session we'll be talking about scheduling, about types of critical path methods, activity on node, and activity on branch. Now in the hydraulic section, in particular on closed systems, we'll be talking about Bernoulli's equation, friction loss, and minor losses in valves and elbows such as this. We'll also be looking at complete systems where we're trying to determine the horsepower or the efficiency of pumps. When it comes to open channel flow, we'll be dealing with Manning's equation to predict velocities and flow rates, and we'll also be looking at measurement systems such as weirs and other flow measuring devices. And hydrology, that is the study of runoff of excessive precipitation on watersheds and the multiple ways of calculating the volume flow rates. And in the area of fresh water treatment, we'll get involved with the chemistry of a water treatment plant. And we'll look at every section of the plant for the equations that simulate the results of that section we will get involved in some chemistry, but I'll keep it light to explain some of those procedures that are involved with wastewater treatment and be able to make some of the simple calculations needed for the morning and afternoon session. 
when it comes to wastewater treatment, it's not chemistry so much anymore, but the problem-solving techniques of dealing with effluent, BOD, and suspended solids. Now on to transportation and surveying. We will do some surveying to look at the classic surveying techniques that could be asked on the test in a multiple choice type fashion. Mostly we'll be dealing with the geometry of road curves, tangents, points of curve, point of tangents, angle of curve, and the equations that describe every one of these. In the Mechanics of Materials session, we'll start off with statics. And here is your typical truss problem. And then we'll move into the strength of materials part, dealing with the stress-strain curve, Hooke's Law, Before we go to beams and beam deflections, we'll look at shear diagrams and beams and moment diagrams and beams. And we'll need all of this for the material that comes in that morning session. Notice that we have examples and problems that are solved during each of the sessions. We're not just dealing with theory here. We need to get the problem solving. We'll take this mechanics of materials and strength of materials and apply it to steel structures, live loads, dead loads, factored loads, in order to size beams. We'll do this by showing you how to use the tables and graphs for steel structures. And in the specialty area of reinforced concrete, we'll be looking to see how much steel is necessary to support concrete beams and columns. And we'll be looking at the characteristic equations that solve for these, including eccentricity, And for these problems, here is another example of how we'll show you what graphs are available to you in your reference manual and how to use these graphs in conjunction with the equations to solve reinforced concrete problems. On the subject of soil mechanics, we'll start by doing some simple soil testing. And We'll do some soil classification using SANES. And we'll test for porosity, moisture content, void ratio, and other things. And we'll go from soil testing into those borrow problems where material is moved from a borrow into another pit, dumped, and compacted and we'll be asked how much volume did we need to borrow and how much volume is it left in the pit. Borrow problems are never easy and I'll show you the most straightforward way to go about them. In earthworks we talk about putting pilings down into cohesive soil and non-cohesive soil. We talk about friction angles and slip angles and what the effects of each of these are. Shear forces of piles and footings and bearing capacity and we'll deal with the most important equations dealing with stress and strain on piles and footings. 
and in the same area we'll deal with slope stability. Stability of slopes and defining the different types of stability of slopes and I'll show you the single most important method that the PE exam requires for slope stability. All of this plus at the end of each section you'll be given many problems to solve all in the multiple choice PE exam format and we'll have our solutions available for you when it's time to grade. This is the fastest way to study for the civil engineering PE exam. This is the most assured way. If you've had trouble before or if you don't want trouble this time give us a chance. This is the best way to study for the civil engineering PE exam.